Welcome to my course on Genome Editing and Engineering. Today we will be discussing about personalized therapy and in this uh, lecture we are going to discuss about the history and basics of uh, personalized therapy. So, this is a very famous museum exhibit which shows a fragment of the uh, Hippocratic Oath and uh, the very same uh, Hippocrates also spoke something very, very interesting about therapy, uh, where he told that it is far more important to know what person has the disease than what disease the person has. So, uh, as long as uh, 370 BC or, or more, the idea of personalized uh, therapy existed in some way and we have to know that uh, therapy may be very, very specific to individuals. And as other things in this world, one size does not fit all. Although we have medicines made to be prescribed for certain diseases, as we progress through this lecture, we will come to know that certain medicines prescribed to certain patients for certain disease may in fact cause them harm rather than a cure them. So, in continuation of this uh, paradigm, one size does not fit all. Uh, personalized or precision medicine or therapy refers to those medicines and therapy that combine genetic information of a person with phenotypic and environmental characteristics to produce healthcare tailored to the individual and eliminates the constraints of one size fits all therapy. Uh, in simple terms, our genotype uh, determines our phenotype and our disease conditions also are governed by the genotypes to a large extent uh, in conjunction uh, with the environment. So, uh, the therapies also has to be tailored to uh, fit into such type and uh, landscape. Uh, generally, drugs are tested on a wide group of people and the average reaction is uh, considered in the drug development process. Uh, this type of evidence based medicine uh, where medical decision making is done based on empirical data is based on the rule of averages, whereas personalized medicine understands that no two patients are uh, similar. Although doctors have known for decades that some medications work better in particular people, they do not yet understand and anticipate why and which medication will be both safe and efficient for any given patient. For example, different people may react substantially differently to the same drug uh, for cancer, cardiac diseases or other diseases, a particular therapy may reduce the sufferings in one person, but not in another. One person may endure severe or life threatening side effects, while another may have few or no reactions at all. One of the key causes of this disparity is that people inherit different genet, uh, gene variants or alleles, uh, little variation of which can cause you know, significant impact on how the body reacts to a specific treatment. Even a little difference such as a single nucleotide base being <coughs> misspelled might have a uh, significant uh, clinical effect. The single nucleotide polymorphisms are very crucial in determining a person's susceptibility to certain diseases as well as drug responses. Let us uh, have a small peep into the history of personalized medicine. As I already told you about uh, Hippocrates. Uh, the idea of personalized medicine is actually not very new. Uh, Ayurveda is a natural healthcare system that that begs to more than 5000 years uh, in India. Um, it thinks that each individual is unique and has a particular constitution and hence emphasizes on personalized uh, treatment. Ayurveda classifies all individuals into different uh, prakriti based on the theory of uh, Tridosa. Uh, we have to understand that Ayurveda uh, is not based on uh, the genetic concepts on which personalized medicine is uh, today based on. Uh, but nevertheless, it had some idea that every individual is very, very unique or uh, and at least they fall into certain uh, classes. Uh, this is uh, independent of the racial, ethnical or uh, geographical considerations and may provide appropriate means of classifying uh, phenotypes to be considered collectively for uh, genotyping. Space, air, fire, water and earth are the five 
essential components or elements of life uh, as uh, laid out in Ayurveda that exist in the human body as the three primary humors known as the tridosas, Batta, Pita and Kapha, you can see and uh, there is interaction between the three. The components of these space and air combine to form uh, the Bata dosha. The Pita dosha is made up of the elements fire and water. Finally, Kapha dosha is derived from art and uh, water components. So, this is just to give an idea about the science of Ayurveda, how, how it treats the various uh, phenotypes into different uh, classes. Uh, similarly, Ayurveda categorizes drugs as in the way it categorizes uh, patients or individuals uh, to Rasa Panchaka or Ayurvedic uh, Pharmacology, which states that the drug's action is attributed to certain factors present in the drug, namely Rasa, which is taste, Guna, which is uh, property, uh, Virya, which is, which is potency, Vipaka, which is post-digestive taste and uh, Prabhava, the effect. Whereas, modern pharmacology attributes the drug action to the chemical structure of a, a molecule. Uh, the Rasapansaka modality can deliver treatment because it considers the person's prakriti, the nature of the person as well as the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetic properties of a drug as opposed to modern treatment which elicits different responses from person to person even when using the same drug from the same uh, diseases. In ancient times around 1550 BC, the earliest indication of treatment tailored to an individual's health uh, came in Homer's uh, Odyssey. The adaptation of that uh, ancient uh, Egyptian uh, medicine to an individual's health situation was elucidated by Herodotus uh, in the classical period when medicine was split into categories and every doctor was a specialist for one ailment and one uh, body part. Uh, Hippocrates, the father of Western medicine about whom we have already uh, discussed in the beginning, focused more on the personalized approach of the disease and eliminated all the superstition that was surrounding at his time. Uh, Hippocrates managed to give a direction in the understanding of the genomic medicine by suggesting that every human is distinct and this affects both the uh, disease prediction and the pre-treatment and the treatment. In 1902, uh, uh, Archibald E. Garrod published the paper, The Incidence of Alcaptonuria, a study in chemical individuality, where he suggested that Alcaptonuria is not the manifestation of a disease, but is rather of the nature of a alternative course of uh, metabolism. He is best known for his uh, book, Inborn Errors of uh, Metabolism, published in 1909, where he claimed that four diseases, Alcaptonuria, Albinism, Cystinuria and Pantosuria were inherited as Mendelian autosomal uh, recessive trait. This foresightful effort paved the way for the study of hereditary illnesses and established Garrod's status as the father of uh, medical, biochemical and uh, molecular uh, genetics. If you look into the timeline of uh, modern uh, medicine, uh, uh, it goes back to uh, uh, the prehistoric uh, era, uh, uh, which around 88,000 uh, BC. Then you have the ancient uh, Egyptian uh, medicine, and then uh, ancient Chinese medicine, and then ancient uh, Indian medicine, and Babylonian medicine, Greek and uh, Roman medicines, Arabic medicines, and evolution of uh, modern medicines. Many of these systems, uh, uh, yeah, in, in various instances, has laid emphasis on the personalized uh, nature of diseases and uh, therapies. However, if we want to have some uh, glaring example of personalized medicine, we need to discuss about uh, malaria, uh, which was uh, first recorded in ancient Chinese uh, medical uh, archives in around uh, 2700 BC. Uh, and even today, it is considered as one of the most serious and little uh, diseases. Uh, several plants, including uh, King Hai in the second century BC in China, and a cinchona tree in the 16th century in Peru uh, have been used to uh, cure malaria. malaria. Uh, Pamaquin uh, and 8 uh, aminoquinonil was one of the most effective medications used to treat acute malaria in uh, 1926. However, administration of this drug showed the adverse effect of hemolytic anemia in many patients. As a result, scientists began researching alternate therapy to combat the side effects of uh, Pamaquin. 
Uh, in the Korean War, uh, primaquine an 8,4 amino 1 methyl butyl amino 6 uh, methoxyquinoline was used as an antimalarial drug to eliminate the long latency of plasmodium vivax infection uh, of the soldiers. In uh, 56, uh, Carson et al. discovered that the side effect of the hemolytic anemia were caused by a deficiency in the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase uh, enzyme. The discovery of the connection between antimalarial drugs and glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency led to a new perspective on the adverse effects of these drugs as well as a more personalized approach towards the disease which was one of the first examples that led to a big step towards the application of a more uh, personalized uh, therapy. So, uh, as I have already given some indications that if you look into the history of medicine, uh, the history of a personalized uh, medicine goes along with it and each and every system uh, of reported uh, medicine uh, or therapy has some kind of uh, record uh, to some extent uh, regarding personalized medicine and you can see uh, as long as 1500 uh, BC uh, the Egyptian uh, personalized uh, medicine existed and uh, we have discussed about the Hippocratic, Hipp uh, Hippocrates uh, approach towards the uh, personalized uh, medicine. And then uh, uh, various other uh, uh, landmarks uh, are important here in understanding uh, the progress of uh, personalized medicine like the discovery of DNA uh, or even uh, the uh, development of the first notion of biomarkers. Uh, as uh, we have discussed about the glucose 6 phosphate uh, deficiency with regards to malaria treatment earlier. So, presence and absence of certain markers are very important in the context of uh, personalized uh, medicine. So, each and every progress in the track of uh, genomics is in, in fact a landmark itself uh, in, in the progress of uh, personalized medicine. Uh, however, uh, the personalized medicine uh, first appeared uh, as a term scientific term roughly around uh, 1900 and one. Uh, then there is other uh, important uh, developments in the way uh, of uh, the uh, glucose phosphate with regards to malaria. We have HER2 uh, gene uh, which is cl uh, clinically relevant in the case of uh, breast cancer and so on and uh, so forth. And uh, uh, today uh, we have uh, uh, the international HEPMEC uh, project uh, which was uh, completed around uh, 2002 and since then uh, we live in the uh, age of uh, uh, modern uh, genomics and also omics. And many of these omics technologies today play a huge role in, in the uh, development of uh, personalized uh, medicine. Pharmacogenomics and personalized medicine. Pharmacogenetics uh, is the scientific branch responsible for uh, researching various individuals reactions to drugs and minimizing the harmful effect due to, due to the variability of the metabolizing enzymes. Since 1959 the word pharmacogenetics has been in use. The earliest use of pharmacogenetics was in the context of phenotypic variation in drug response and metabolism by the end of the 1950s. It had been proven that this was a regular occurrence in the case of various medication therapies. After making only modest strides in the 1960s and 70s, the 1980s saw a significant improvement in the understanding of the genetic underpinnings of this phenotypic variance as a result of enhanced analytical techniques, more comprehensive drug development programs and human uh, gene cloning uh, became possible. The word uh, pharmacogenomics was originally coined in 1997 and it began to be used in addition to pharmacogenetics as gene cloning progress to the sequencing of the complete human genome. Nowadays, the two terms are used interchangeably. Although pharmacogenomics is a broader term encompassing all the genes in the genome uh, that are responsible for determining a uh, drug response. There are various factors which are responsible for inter-individual variation in drug response and which range from A, gender, ethnicity, uh, BMI, family history, comorbidity uh, or genome, transcriptome, metabolome, proteome and microme which are basically considered as individual factors and the lifestyle, the nutrition, the chemical exposure, uh, epigenetic uh, factors and even uh, the uh, place of residence uh, play an important role and these are uh, part of the environmental 
uh, factors. Together these uh, individual factors and environmental factors uh, influence the pharmacogenomics and or the pharmacokinetics uh, with respect to uh, disease as well as uh, personalized medicine. When a gene variation is linked to a certain pharmacological reaction in a patient, there is the possibility of making therapeutic decisions based on genetic success, modifying the doses or switching to a different treatment. Scientists evaluate gene variations impacting a person's drug response by following modern approaches like multigene analysis or whole genome single nucleotide polymorphism uh, profiles. Uh, genetic variation and pharmacogenetics, the most significant gene family that contributes to the oxidative metabolism of a variety of different medications is the cytochrome P450 cytochrome P family. For distinct cytochromes P450, uh, CYP26, CYP269, uh, CYP3A4 and CYP2C19, each encoded by a separate gene play a crucial role in, is, in this process. All are affected by genetic variations. In the cases of CYP2D6 and CYP2C19, large portions of the population are entirely deficient in one of these enzymes due to the existence of inactivating genetic polymorphisms. The absence of activity is caused by the existence of certain mutant alleles which encode for inactive versions of the enzyme. Additionally, certain individuals known as uh, ultra rapid uh, metabolizers have greater than average CY, uh, CYP2D6 or CYP2C19 activity. This is the consequence of one or more extra copies of the gene being present in the case of CYP2D6 uh, while higher gene expression is a result of polymorphisms in the case of uh, CYP2C19. And here in this figure, you can see uh, some of the uh, uh, genes uh, or uh, some of the uh, symptoms uh, getting uh, 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 much more uh, worse and some of them are uh, less. Uh, for example, uh, if we uh, consider uh, the uh, CYP3A4 uh, uh, by 5, uh, here the inflammation uh, goes down and uh, there uh, is less uh, polymorphism and it uh, progresses with uh, age. So, the fraction of clinically used uh, drugs uh, metabolized by uh, P450 isoforms and factors uh, influence uh, variability. Important variability factors are indicated by the uh, bold types uh, as you can see here with possible directions of the influences uh, mediated. Uh, either it is increased uh, or which goes up or decreased uh, which uh, goes down. Uh, factors of controversial significance are uh, shown in uh, parenthesis. Uh, for example, uh, in this case uh, the gender of the person uh, it is not uh, very very uh, uh, clear. And uh, similarly uh, here the uh, polymorphism is uh, not a very very uh, clear uh, uh, concept or clear uh, phenomena with regards to CYP1A2. Uh, uh, Personalized medicine or precision medicine, uh, this is one important uh, topic we need to uh, discuss before we proceed to the uh, next part of the lecture. Uh, these phrases uh, personalized medicine and uh, precision medicine has in fact a lot in uh, common, although they have been used uh, uh, under various uh, uh, context uh, in, in various uh, cases. Uh, the National Research Council claims that personalized medicine is a more ancient phrase with a similar meaning to precision medicine. So, they are not different, they are same, but personalized medicine is a more primitive term. In precision medicine, the emphasis is on identifying which strategies will be effective for which patients based on genetic, environmental and lifestyle factors. However, there was concerned that the term personalized could be interpreted incorrectly to imply that treatments and preventions are being developed specifically for each individual. The phrase is personalized stratified and individualized medicine have frequently been used synonymously, but pre precision has recently taken a precedence over all these. The National Institutes of Health defines precision medicine as the approach for disease treatment and prevention that takes into account individual variability in genes, environment 
and lifestyle for each uh, person. Uh, Barack Obama, the 44th uh, President of the United States announced a research initiative focused on uh, hastening the transition uh, to a new age of precision medicine uh, with a, a near term focus on cancer and a longer term aim to produce knowledge uh, that can be applied to the full spectrum of health and diseases uh, in uh, January 20, uh, 2015. Uh, so, on this particular date, uh, Obama came out with this uh, famous uh, declaration, uh, tonight I am launching a new precision medicine initiative to bring us closer to curing diseases like cancer and diabetes and to give us, give all of us access to the personalized information we need to keep ourselves and our uh, families uh, healthier. One of the important technologies uh, that is playing a crucial role. Uh, in the uh, domain of personalized and precision medicine is the next generation sequencing. So, let us briefly have some idea about this NGS uh, technologies uh, which has helped in the development of personalized medicine by providing scientists with a strong tool to comprehend his patient's condition and its unique genetic features and whole genome mutational status with single nucleotide uh, resolution. The human genome project uh, was completed in 2001 and it opened the door to a better knowledge of uh, precision uh, medicines. So, uh, if we have for example, a particular person with a particular disease for instance cancer, uh, we take out the uh, particular tissue here yeah, in this case is the tumor and then we subject it to uh, sequencing and then do, do the analysis and the modeling. And depending on the uh, different uh, persons, we may have the option of prescribing different uh, cancer drugs. So, this is based uh, exemplified by uh, uh, drugs like uh, uh, Herceptin. Uh, so, for uh, a, a better understanding of these, uh, there is a very famous uh, movie called Living Proof. Uh, it, it, it is uh, worth uh, watching this movie to understand how uh, personalized medicine plays important role uh, in, in, in uh, cancer therapeutics and uh, that is also uh, is true for other uh, diseases. What is the connection of next generation sequencing and personalized uh, medicine? So, we have uh, told that uh, the history of medicine overall and the history of personalized medicine uh, have been intricately linked with one another uh, since the beginning. And so, also the development of various uh, genomics uh, technologies and platforms uh, which are being used to understand our uh, genetic uh, uh, composition or genetic uh, sequences. And herein the linkage of personalized medicine uh, to sequencing technologies is uh, very, very uh, in intimate. I will not go into details of the various methods for sequencing like Sanger which was developed as old as 1977 and various uh, milestones uh, where the human mitochondrial genome was sequenced in 81. Then the uh, second generation uh, sequences came after the uh, complete human uh, genome was elucidated and so on and uh, so forth. Uh, today we have uh, nano uh, sequences. And uh, we are going a little bit further into understanding uh, the human uh, microbiome, uh, which is also considered as one of the important component of the human uh, health. So, here are the various steps involved in the next uh, generation uh, sequencing. For example, it starts with uh, library preparation, then the DNA library uh, bridge amplification is done and finally, the DNA uh, library sequencing is done and once the dat raw data is obtained, the alignment and data analysis is uh, completed. The key concerns of medical diagnosis is to identify the genes and mutations responsible for human uh, disorders and in this context, uh, uh, next generation sequences, sequencing plays very important role. I, early diagnosis of genetic abnormalities, carrier status, the genetic predispositions to cancer and cardiovascular disease may minimize healthcare cost and uh, disease severity. Uh, Sandhu's group uh, published the first proof of concept that NGS technology may be used to diagnose uh, genetic disease in uh, September uh, 2009. Uh, after a few months, uh, they reported uh, Miller syndrome, the first recessive disorder uh, through whole genome, whole exome uh, sequencing. So, here you can see a, uh, an individual 
uh, who may be normal or diseased. Uh, he is subjected to physical examination and transcriptomic, uh, proteomic and metabolomic analysis uh, and, and, and the family history is also recorded. And here uh, uh, the, his DNA is genomic DNA is uh, extracted and the whole genome uh, sequencing is done. So, along with these uh, records of uh, physical examination, transcriptomic, uh, met proteomic and metabolomic analysis as well as family's history and the genomic information, bioinformatic uh, analysis and interpretation is done to derive at uh, the uh, uh, correct diagnostics uh, with the help of uh, genetic information. And based on that, the treatment is decided uh, for the particular uh, individual. So, this is the role of NGS in developing personalized medicine as you can visualize from this particular uh, diagram. Personalized treatment based on uh, comprehensive NGS uh, based uh, genotyping uh, data. In A, you can see uh, in traditional medicine most diseases are treated according to clinical characteristics. Uh, there is a therapeutic indication and there are potential uh, medications and then standard of care uh, the standard treatment regime uh, will be given drug A, normal dose, drug A, uh, normal uh, dose uh, uh, to uh, a group on, and to uh, different uh, individuals. Although these approaches are effective and secure for the majority of patients, some may not respond to the uh, prescribed uh, drug or may encounter negative uh, side effects. In the next generation sequencing based uh, treatment approach, NGS can be used to collect genetic information uh, to identify the outlier patients in advance and to suggest potential alternatives for them. The NGS data of the particular uh, patient are used to identify variation in genes and coding proteins involved in drug absorption, distribution, metabolism and uh, excretion and uh, therapeutic targets as well as their regulatory uh, areas. All pharmacogenes uh, activity ratings are calculated based on the combined effects of all the uh, detected uh, variations. Uh, this might offer uh, recommendations to the responsible doctor on the medicine selection and doses. So, we see a, uh, a huge paradigm shift in the uh, therapeutic approaches in the pre and post uh, NGS uh, era. However, there are certain limitations of NGS, um, it, although it is a very useful tool for studying genomic alterations that connect to clinical diseases, it has several limitations such as analytical sensitivity of mutation detection which makes it difficult to identify a low tumor proportion and a lower mutation owing to tumor heterogeneity. In the NGS systems such as Illumina, systemic and sequencing mistakes are prevalent. Current NGS technologies are unreliable when it comes to recognizing homologous genes. GC rich regions and uh, repetitive regions. Another big challenge is the interpretation of NGS data and the databases may not always be reliable because structural and copy number variations necessitates uh, the interdependent independent bioinformatics algorithms. Numerous approaches must be coupled to read the NGS uh, analysis. So, this is the um, overview of COVID-19 uh, therapeutics and drug. The scenario is still emerging. It is one of the uh, biggest challenge of uh, modern uh, uh, epidemiology and we are still trying to cope up with it. So, various um, uh, combination therapy uh, then even traditional uh, medicines or repurposed drug and then uh, neutralizing antibodies and even uh, using a passive antibody transfer, oligonucleotides, antiviral drugs and other critical therapies then uh, blocking coronavirus uh, receptors like ACE2 or giving immunostimulants like vitamin C, mushroom extract, uh, extracts, etc. Uh, has been tried. Some of these work for certain uh, type of uh, patients uh, while uh, some does not work for uh, any uh, others and uh, in certain cases none of these works uh, for any of the individuals. So, uh, it has made uh, a, a very uh, uh, complex uh, situation and uh, uh, current healthcare uh, workers and as well as scientists are actually puzzled uh, regarding the complexity of uh, uh, corona virus. Uh, so, there are certain limitations uh, as we understand uh, from this uh, big uh, uh, pandemic uh, we had. 
uh, it is uh, widely recognized that the genetic background of each patient in the case of COVID-19 pandemics may be one of the key determinants of drug efficacy and toxicity and that is the reason why they some of them respond to certain uh, treatment uh, regimes uh, probably and these are all uh, guesses made uh, but uh, in the context of personalized medicine uh, the coronavirus uh, can be a very important area of research uh, in the future. The challenge of COVID-19 virus made physicians and healthcare workers to realize that problems uh, that the global healthcare system faces and to acknowledge the crucial role of applied uh, personalized uh, medicine. With this we come to end of this part. Thank you for your patient hearing. We will be continuing this lecture in part B. Thank you.